This is the beginning of part four of our module on interest rate forwards and swaps, which we remind you contains a single chapter, chapter five, consisting of an eight question quiz. Question one. On January 1st, 2009, a borrower whose interest cost is LIBOR plus 75 basis points under a $100 million loan signs up for the 12 by 18 FRA. The rate under the FRA is 5%. Six-month LIBOR resets at the beginning of January 2010 at 6%. What is the exact all-in amount paid in that period by the borrower, taking into account both the loan and the FRA, and assuming the FRA settles at the end of that period? Here are the four permissible answers. Solution to question one. Under the loan, the borrower pays the principal of $100 million times the new LIBOR setting of 6% plus 75 basis points times the number of days divided by 360. Whereas under the FRA he receives the notional of $100 million times the difference between the 6% LIBOR setting and the FRA contractual rate of 5%, again adjusted for the day count. Subtracting the second item from the first leads us to his all-in cost, which therefore comes to 100 million times 575% adjusted for the day count, and this equals just under $2.9 million. Therefore, the correct answer is B as in boy. Question 2. How much money could you make if you tried to arbitrage the following rates a dealer quotes you on January 1, 2009? Assume a $100 million notional for your arbitrage. Answers A, B, C, and D. Solution to question two. You borrow for three months at the offer rate of 4%. Lock in a borrowing rate for the next three months also at the offer rate of 4.45 and invest the money for six months at the bid rate of 428 percent. Per one dollar your profit would be the amount indicated in this formula here which turns into 0 0.00016 per dollar or relative to a notional of a hundred million fifteen thousand seven hundred and seventy nine dollars so the correct answer is a as in apple question three you are asked on January 1 2009 to price the fixed rate leg of an interest rate swap having the terms below you, the dealer, will be receiving the floating payments and will need to earn a profit. Please use the same LIBOR curve we have used in the initial chapters of this module. Here are the terms. Please note carefully an amortizing schedule, mismatched frequencies on the two legs of the swap, different day count conventions for the two legs, and a forward starting date, 
and finally a required dealer profit of $125,000. The four possible answers are A, B, C, and D. Question 3 Solution This worksheet illustrates first a fixed rate of 5.3674% consistent with a zero profit for the dealer. Please note carefully as you review this solution the following. First, the zero notional for the first two quarters since the swap does not start until July 1, 2009. Then the reduced notional from 100 million to 50 million in the last two quarters. And the use of the actual 360 day count convention in column H versus the use in column K of the 3360 convention as instructed and of course the difference in the frequencies of payments under the two legs with one leg making quarterly payments while the other leg makes only semi-annual payments. We now use Goal Seek to set the dealer profit to a hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Thus tools Goal Seek set sell K20 to value 125,000 a number you input as a positive since the dealer is receiving here the floating payments by changing cell H21 and hitting OK reveals a solution of approximately 5.29%. So the correct answer is C as in Charles. Question 4. You have entered into a 10-year interest rate swap in which you receive 6% fixed semi-annually and pay LIBOR semi-annually on a notional, notional of $10 million. Right after you enter the swap, the whole LIBOR curve shifts upwards by parallel 100 basis points. Which of the following is most likely to be your approximate P&L? Do not use Excel to estimate your answer. The four possible answers are A, B, C, and D. Solution to question four. Since you are receiving the fixed payments, and rates have risen. You should expect a loss since the present value of the cash flows you are receiving will diminish as we discussed before. The duration of the swap being a 10-year swap should pretty obviously be much closer to 7 than it is to 3 given that the swap we modeled earlier in the module had a three-year maturity 
and a duration of around 2.8. A duration of 7 looks about right, meaning the swap would lose 7% of its notional given the 1% shift in rates. Please note we are essentially ignoring convexity since we are only asked for an approximate answer. So the correct answer is B, as in boy. The actual duration of the swap is in fact around 7.1. It would be a good exercise for you to confirm this, but we will not show the answer. Question 5. Which of the following methods would not be a possible hedge for an interest rate swap you have entered into where you are paying fixed and receiving LIBOR. The four possible answers are A. Issue a fixed rate note and invest the proceeds in a floating rate note. B. Enter another interest rate swap with another counterparty under which you receive fixed and pay LIBOR. C. Enter into a series of frauds in which you pay the settlement rate and receive the contract rate. And D. Purchase a fixed rate bond and pledge it to a bank's repo funding desk for funding at the LIBOR rate. Solution to question 5. You are paying fixed under the swap, so you need to receive fixed under your hedge and pay LIBOR. The only hedge that fails to do this is the first one. So the correct answer is A as in Apple. Question 6. The LIBOR curve in US dollars is flat at 3%, while in sterling it is flat at 5%. On January 1, 2009, a borrower issues a 200 million sterling three year bond paying 7% quarterly and wishes to swap it into a dollar synthetic liability based on three-month LIBOR. The FX spot rate for sterling dollar is 175. The dealer would like to earn a profit margin of half a million dollars up front on this swap. What is the all-in cost the dealer can quote the borrower. The four possible answers are LIBOR minus 10, LIBOR plus 107, LIBOR plus 179, and LIBOR plus 203. Solution to question 6. Worksheet Question 6 solution 1, appearing in front of you, has been programmed with the specified LIBOR curves in the two currencies to price a three-year sterling dollar cross-currency swap with quarterly payments and with the correct notional amounts in the two currencies but with zero profit margin for the dealer. As always, we can now use GoalSeek to solve for the fixed rate of the dollar leg 
that would enable this profit margin expressed already in millions in this worksheet to reach 0 0.5 million by changing cell D20. And this reveals a solution of 5.03% in this cell D20. This next worksheet, labeled Question 6, Solution 2, shows in cell G22 that the fixed rate of a three-year dollar interest rate swap, given the shape of the curve in column F, is 3%. Of course, you did not need the worksheet to figure this out, since the LIBOR curve is completely flat at 3% and therefore the swap rate is exactly equal to this same 3%. The diagram that has just appeared now shows the borrower issuing the bond in sterling at 7% in the vertical arrow pointing downward in the middle of the diagram, swapping it into US dollars at 5.03% by means of the cross-currency swap we just priced, shown on the right-hand side via the four arrows combined together on the right, and finally entering into a US dollar interest rate swap in which he pays dollar LIBOR and receives 3% fixed on 350 million of notional. A minute's thought should reveal that his all-in US dollar cost is therefore LIBOR plus two hundred and three basis points. Therefore, the correct answer is D as in David. Question seven. Today is January 1, 2009. The dollar LIBOR curve is monotonically downward sloping with six-month LIBOR spot at 6% and the five-year forward six-month LIBOR at 4%. You have just priced a spot starting bullet interest rate swap and are now asked to price a second swap which starts on January 1, 2010 and which amortizes by 25% of its original notional amount on each anniversary. The fixed leg of the swap, of the second swap to be specific, will rise in relation to the first swap as a result of both of these amendments, only as a result of the delayed start, only as a result of the amortization, or due to neither. Solution to question 7. Since the curve is downward sloping, the highest values for LIBOR are the earlier ones, and obviously the lowest values are the last ones. Postponing the start date of the swap 
removes the highest LIBORs from the calculation of the swap rate and therefore reduces the swap rate. Amortizing the swap notional towards the end of its life puts lower weights on the last few LIBORs which are the lower values and therefore increases the swap rate. Therefore only the second effect increases the swap rate and the correct answer therefore is C as in Charles. This is question 8, the final question in this quiz. A company has just issued $100 million of fixed rate five-year bonds at a price of par and with a coupon of 6% paid annually but has paid upfront fees of 0 0.50 million. The company wishes to swap the debt into sterling. The spot rate for sterling dollar is 125. Annual swap rates for five years are shown in the three lines below. And we bring to your attention in particular the LIBOR sterling dollar basis swap and the fact that an adjustment of one basis point or four basis points depending on which side of the market you're on is required to the sterling LIBOR leg. Assuming the company pays full bid offer spreads what is the all-in cost of the dollar debt swapped into fixed sterling? We give you a hint to be sure to use the all-in cost of the dollar debt by not forgetting, i.e. by taking into account those upfront fees paid for the bond offering. Remember this is similar to the concept of yield to maturity. The four possible answers will appear below but we will not read them out. A, B, C, and D. Solution to question 8. First, we need to calculate the yield to maturity of the bond given the upfront costs of 0.5%. In this worksheet labeled YTM, the rate function in Excel requires us to input negative 99.5 for PV, which are the net proceeds received by the company relative to a face value of 100, 6 for PMT, hence the C8 times 100 item in the formula, 100 for FV, and 5 for the tenor in years. And this Excel function reveals a yield to maturity on the bond of 6.12%, 6.12%. The diagram about to appear in front of you shows on the left the company issuing the bond, but where we have written the all-in cost of the bond, i.e. 612 in dollars, rather than just its coupon, since you are asked to calculate the all-in cost in sterling 
after swapping this bond into sterling. The diagram also shows the company entering three swaps on the right as discussed in Chapter 3 exactly. First, under the top two arrows on the right, a dollar interest rate swap under which the company pays dollar LIBOR and receives 6-12% in dollars, this being the bid side of that market. Then under the middle four arrows on the right, a sterling dollar LIBOR basis swap under which the company receives dollar LIBOR pays sterling LIBOR plus four basis points being the offer side of that market and also involving an exchange of the two principal amounts at maturity i.e. $100 million received versus £80 million pounds paid at maturity at an implied rate of 1.25 being the spot rate for the FX as explained in Chapter 3. And finally, a sterling interest rate swap in which the company receives sterling LIBOR and pays the offer side rate of 802 in sterling. You may have noticed the not entirely coincidental point that the bonds all in cost in dollars 612 matches exactly the fixed rate under the dollar interest rate swap which makes then the process of collapsing as many errors as possible particularly easy and should enable you very quickly to see that the all-in cost in sterling becomes 8.06 in sterling that being the 802 under the bottom arrow and the four basis points under the basis swap The correct answer, as we said, is therefore 806 in sterling, and this is answer A as an apple for purposes of question 8. This concludes completely this two-part rather lengthy module on interest rate and cross-currency swaps. including the quiz section at the end.